What we're talking about, boys, in this series of videos on my VBOK concept is an insurance policy. It costs money. It takes time. It takes effort to keep it in your vehicle. But man, what a feeling. What a peace of mind. Come with me, if you will, on my journey. Let's say I'm going from point A to point B. I'm in my car, my truck, mostly for me, in the Titan. But during that 400-mile journey, let's say, for whatever reason, things go south. I mean, they get bad very quickly. Maybe it's a natural disaster, a hurricane, an earthquake, floods. But let's say it's long term. Okay. We talked about that in POU, right? Part one, you watched that? Tell me you watched that video. <laughs> okay. It's foundational. Watch that. Yeah. So it's long term. Maybe it's violence, widespread violence, which we have seen right? We saw a ton of it from Protifa, BLM in 2020. That could reemerge, right? They shut down roads all the time. Although I would say in that situation, it's more short term. I would not be leaving my vehicle from what I've seen so far. But the point is we can't foresee what's going to happen. Okay. We don't know the nature of why we could not travel in our vehicle to get to our destination. I said, it's an insurance policy. It costs money. It takes time, effort, all true. But imagine, imagine your peace of mind knowing that when you find yourself in this situation, you're ready. That you have the preparations to get to point B, to your destination. You know what you're going to say when that happens, by the way? Let's say you have your VBOK, or as I like to say, your VBOK. Yeah, that. You have that totally prepped up. You have a food supplement, a clothing supplement, good boots in there, and you're ready to go. Okay, it happens. You know what you're going to say? And I'm assuming like you've determined, hey, this isn't going to work. I got to leave my vehicle. Let's say 48 hours have passed. I'm like, okay, I got to abandon the vehicle, just like we talked about in part one. I'm underway and I'm going to go. You know what you're going to say? You're going to say this. Nothing fancy, you beautiful bastard. That's what you're going to say. <laughs> you're going to say, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I have this kit with me. Nothing fancy. Thanks for the ideas. <laughs> By the way, I'm still fighting a cold. It is awful. It will not leave me. I might have to cut out abruptly some stuff if I'm coughing, hacking, blowing my nose. Sorry. Show goes on. Yeah, you may say, nothing fancy, you beautiful bastard. I will say this though. You guys are impressive. You really are. TMPers are not idiots by any means. In fact, they're very, very smart and they're pretty much prepped up in a lot of ways. Now, I'm not so sure it's because of me. I'm not going to take credit for that. I think it's because how you guys are just put together, how you're wired. You're smart. You watch the winds of society. You know things can go south and they have gone south and it's going to get worse as time goes on. We've talked about that. You're impressive. So rolling at the end of each of these parts, I think, I don't know how many parts this will be. I suspect maybe three or four, maybe an hour a piece because I have a lot to talk about. I'll talk about the detail here in a second. Yeah. So scrolling at the end of the video will be the same clip and it is basically showing the comments in the TMP Patreon clubhouse with what the guy said. I solicited their input or early before I did the POU video. And then, you know, I got some ideas from them. It was great to hear from them. So you're going to see them at the end of the video. What I found out is a lot of guys have already built V box. Or some guys call them get home bags. That's fine. Uh, but if you want to use a TMP term, it's V box. I like the sound of that, by the way. That sounds badass. V box. Yeah. You see, a lot of them in one form of, or another have it. Uh, So that's good. Now, here's one thing, by the way, and these guys in the comments really didn't know what direction I was taking. Here's what a VBOC is not. I didn't talk about this in the POU video. It's not a vehicular repair kit. That's separate. Okay, you got to have that. And what I'm talking about is like jumper cables, like uh, a battery starter. You know, those charged batteries that you can start a dead car with, a fire extinguisher, car tools, chains, shovel, gas cans, a recovery kit, toe straps, 
That's not in your BOK, bro. You do not and will not have SAWC. As a reminder, if for some reason you insanely skipped the part one of this V-Box series, the POU video, filmed in the uh, where? That's correct, the warehouse. Good job, dude. Yeah, so if you skip that, what we're doing is we just want to get to our destination. We, we find ourselves here in a very unfortunate situation, and we just need a few supplies, maybe a lot of supplies, depending on our situation, to get the hell where we want to go. We're not going to fight a war. We're not going to punish people. We're not going to rescue everyone along the way. We do not have resources for it. We probably do not have, as I call it, time, uh, calories, and en energy, TCE. We do what we can. We want to be of service. We want to be kind. We want to, to be Christ-like. We do what we can. But we, we are trying to get to point B, our destination. And it's important to stay laser beam focused on that because it determines how you build your kit, what you bring with you your approach, your choice of container, which I'm going to cover in this part two. Yeah. So it's not a vehicular repair kit. And some guys, I don't fault them at all. They didn't know where I was going with it, but they mentioned in their comments, Hey, you know, have this and you should have that. It's just not part of the VBOC. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. So I was going to talk about the detail. This is so good. So I just had a flash. I was like, oh, I'm going to talk to the guys in the clubhouse. And by the way, join TMP Patreon. You can do so for free. It's called a charter membership. You'll get two more videos per month in this general TMP audience on the AMB channels get. But if you're a paying member, you get full flow of content. And I really wish you would become a paying member. I think most guys are doing like 10 bucks a month, some more. Totally doable, less than a hamburger in most situations. Uh, link is below. You'll see me banner it because, sorry, I have to make up for attrition. I have guys for whatever reason leave the clubhouse and that's why I'm always recruiting to have basically the same number. So sorry for annoying you, but it is important. It does pay for the show. It actually bought everything you're going to see. Donation money, bought everything. Well, not everything because some of the stuff I bought with old YouTube ad dollars, once upon a time, you know, I used to make ad money in my on my A channel, no longer. And so that Red Wing back to pack. Oh, hold on. I just ruined the uh, container choice. Yeah, the Red Wing I bought with uh, ad dollars, but some of the other stuff I bought with donation money. There you go. But anyways, this, uh, this is getting to my point too. I asked the guys, I was like, do you want high detail, medium detail, or low detail in the series of videos on my VBOC concept? What did they choose? That's correct. High detail. Like by 98%. Last time I looked, they're like, dude, you know the answer. High detail. Just do what you do. Nothing fancy. Take your detours Waste our time. We love it. <laughs> I'm good at wasting your time. I am. So we're here to have fun. That's primary. Primary. We're going to have fun, but we're here to learn. Um, I'm not going to know everything. My kit build, which is fresh, and I am going to use it, but it's a little bit different than the other kit builds that you've seen in the, in the project before. I'm not going to say it's going to stay the same. So, And that's the same for all of my kits. So when I initially build them, they generally stay the same, like the core concept and the core materials will stay the same. But as technology improves or I find something else to integrate, sometimes I do that. Now, at this point in the project, you dudes have a lot to choose from in my survival kit concepts. You should know this, right? So we have the urban survival kit, the USK, that was posted anciently, still plays. If you don't know, all my videos, even my reviews, are designed to last approximately 45 years. <laughs> if I'm going to attach a time to it, 45 years. I'm serious. The USK still plays. I mean, but that is focused for escaping an urban environment. Maybe you watch this series, then you go to USK, watch that series, and you say, okay, I'll take that for my specific situation and integrate it into my VBOC. Could happen. And then later on, we had the pilot survival kit. Now I did a pilot survival vest in 2008, but then I did a basically a pilot survival kit as I flew with more or less over enemy territory in the United States Air Force. Salute, Lieutenant Colonel Nutton Fancy reporting for duty. No, I don't want to report for duty. I'm done with that. I served my time. Go watch that. That's a fun series of videos too. So uh, we did that series. We did the day hike survival kit series. That's probably the freshest going back a little bit. We did the 
bug out kit series, which is very extensive, informationally dense. There's lots of information in there. What you will see amongst all my kit builds and probably yours too is a similarity because our needs are basically the same in a lot of ways. So, you know, we need to stay warm. Maybe we need to signal. Maybe we, we definitely need to carry the stuff in some way. We might need a first aid requirement. We'll need food, basically life necessities. Now, how you approach that and how much and how deep your items are is really dependent on the situation. There are some differences with my VBOK. And I'll talk about it. When I get to weaponry, there's a big difference that may surprise you. And I think you guys will be very surprised with what I'm going with. Now, that's the juicy part of the meal. Okay. <laughs> so I need to like pace myself before we get to the guns. Everyone wants to hear about the gun. Do, 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 what gun, what gun, what gun, what gun. Well, let's talk about toilet paper for a little bit, can we? What are we going to wipe our ass with? Okay. Speaking of which, I don't know if I included that, but it is pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. So we'll get to it. I'm going to break it open. We're talk we're going to launch with a container choice. And then I, I was going to like separate it like thematically, like uh, tool section, weapon selection, you know, uh, container selection. I was like, ah, let's just show them the kit. We'll just go through it organically. And I'll just keep tapping my screen. I forgot to look at my watch. And in about an hour, I'll just shut up and we'll do part three. So I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about four parts to get through this in high detail, which the guys in the clubhouse want. Okay. And again, that means I don't have to hurry because uh, I could rip through this in about an hour, but it, you would be wanting more. I can guarantee that you would want more. You're like, wait, 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 what about that? What about that? Another cool thing you guys are going to see, you're going to really love is I didn't do one of my own first aid kit builds. I have a pre-built. I'm going to talk about it. And since you voted for high detail, that means I can dig in it and kind of review it. I don't want to get you know too into the weeds with it, but we're going to go through it and see what's in there. And I'll give you my impression on it. And I'll tell you my approach into making it better. There you go. That's the foundation for this video. Thanks again for joining me. Uh, at least subscribe, hit the notification bell. I'm not sure which channel I'll post this on. Now you guys are super, super funny, super, super smart. The funny part is that, you know how in videos, and I have been doing this for a number of years, I go, hey guys, don't send me anything ever unsolicited for any reason. <laughs> you guys know I've been doing that. You should, cause I've said it in like a, probably a hundred videos at this point. And I am serious. I don't want any stuff. I don't want free stuff. I don't need it. Now, if you contact me in Patreon, it's a certain item I want to review. That's different. So that's, that's not unsolicited. It's you and I coming together as a team and saying, yeah, let's review that. So I do do that occasionally. But you guys, you take me, you take me at my word, uh, like uh, literally, because here's what I say. There are a couple exceptions. You can send me ammunition anytime. Okay, you can send me cases of 9 millimeter, 223, 556, uh, 308, 6.5 Creedmoor, 50 BMG. Yeah, for the Barrett. Yeah, we need to shoot that Barrett some more. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, 22 long rifle. Yeah, super high quality CCI. I take cases of that any day. 76239, blah, blah. Oh, speaking of which, here is TMPP. That stands for TMP Patreon member Hudson Childs. Dude, he sent me a whole case of ammo. Now it's not the same stuff, but I bet it, he spent over, I would say probably $700 in the stuff he sent me. So you're looking at 6.5 Creedmoor match. I'm just showing you some of it. He sent me like 20 boxes. So round of applause for, uh, yeah, you get mentioned on camera, Hudson Childs. Yeah. You'll get a round of applause too. If you do that, contact me and, uh, and he contacted me. That was not unsolicited. He said, Hey, I got some ammo. Do you want it? I was like, yes, 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 please, 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 please. I'm unsponsored. I need ammo. Yes. yes I love ammo. I love, love ammo. Uh, also money. I like cash, large loads of cash. I'll always accept gratefully. And then hot women. So I don't know if you've noticed, but sitting on the upper right in the bunker are two of the hot women that you guys sent me. You're so funny. This is a, what I was getting to. You guys are so damn funny. Don't send me any more like sex dolls. I mean, there's those ones and her boobies may be showing, but whatever. It's a man show. Enjoy. Enjoy. If I, I get boring and no doubt that will happen, just look up there. And by the way, we've got a beautiful heavy duty 
one of the largest, not excavators, but front end loaders in the world, the 994K Caterpillar. Oh my gosh, making its first appearance in the bunker, round of applause. That thing is in 150th scale, so that is a big son of a gun. And more stuff, maybe I'll talk about it. Let's get going. Okay, V-Buck. Okay, container selection. Let's go back to what we're trying to do. We've decided worst case, and there was a comment in that uh, in that Patreon clubhouse. You'll see the dude, and he and he goes, "Hey, plan on worst case." I loved it. I was like, "Yeah, that's what I'm doing." So worst case is we can't use our vehicle. Now let me pause, and I'll come back to this point. But again, to reiterate, we're not spring loaded to like jump ship and leave our vehicle. So I don't want you to go, "Oh, nothing fancy that." fabulous son of a bitch. I'm leaving my car. I'm going to start hiking. No, 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 no. You want to bug in whenever you can. In other words, stay at your house, stay in your vehicle as long as practically you're able. That's what you need to do. It's only if you've determined, Hey man, if I'm going to get to my destination, I got to leave. And you'll kind of know when that has happened, right? The road will tell you the violence around you may tell you your situation will tell you. And remember, there's different situations. So my kit build is more, uh, let's say outdoorsy. It's less urban. I think that's a little bit more difficult. Yours may be more urban focused where you don't have to take the amount of food I do. You may not have to take warm clothing. You may not have to have hiking boots because you're not going on that 400 mile journey. You might be going 20 miles, in which case maybe, I don't know, a pack of Tic Tacs, a bottle of water and a Glock would be a good enough, you know? I like that. There's your V-Bock. Pack of Tic Tacs, a Glock, and a bottle of water. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, so your your situation could be completely different. Okay, but le- what we're doing then is we are going to, in worst case, abandon the vehicle, start humping. Now, multiple dudes in the Patreon clubhouse did say, and they they are in agreement with me because I said it in the POU video, all of us have to be in shape, okay, if at all possible. Now, some of us have injuries. We have disabilities, and that is unfortunate. So in that case, you may be more apt to bug in to uh, or stay in your vehicle as long as you can. Hang on, I got a cough. And that is what it is. I mean, at least you have supplies in your vehicle. So even though you're not bailing, going on foot for a long distance, potentially, you have supplies for your vehicle. So a VBOK is A-OK to use in that situation. It's basically a survival kit to be applied however you see fit when you are vehicle bound. But get in shape if you can. Guys were asking me about my fitness routine. <clears throat> since I'm always healthy, apparently, since I'm so ripped, Ugh, ouch, Ooh, son of a bitch. Yeah, so they want to know my fitness routine. It's Reese's min, uh, mid-afternoon naps and lots of potato chips. I'm kidding, of course. At least about the mid-afternoon naps. I don't have time. The rest, um, yeah, on occasion. No, on a more serious note, I think anything you do in a fitness realm is helpful. I mean, literally anything. If you get out and walk 20 minutes per day or at least five times a week, that's a win. If you have a treadmill, use that treadmill because it's more cushioning. It's better on your knees and your joints. Walk, 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 walk. If you can jog, jog. But you want to have your body able to walk long distances. And if you are not practiced in doing that, you may, you may have some problems when you decide to undertake that long hike with your v You get me? Now, weight training is another great thing to do. Weight train. Don't build mass. Just stay toned. If you did 20 minutes of cardio, 20 minutes of weight training five times a week, you're going to be so much better. And that's not a lot of time. Do I do that? Not religiously. I'm trying to, but it's on my list of things to do. And my knee has issues, blah, blah, blah. I've talked a lot about it. I do what I can. I'm more on the bike these days 
but that's cardio. And anything you can keep those leg muscles strong and then just keep your mid core, your core strong too, because anything that where you're bending over and carrying a backpack, you want that core strength to be there. So lay off the bacon a little bit, lay off the waffles, lay off the fried chicken. If you are serious about being prepared, not just for VBOC, uh, sorry, VBOC use, but for in life. All your tactical preparations, everything is out the window if you do not have a body to operate it in most situations. Now, if you're in a static location, like at your bug out location, that's different. I hear you. It's different. But I'm just saying, generally speaking. Okay, that's all I have time to say, but it is foundational to the concept of you shouldering your pack and hiking out. And I've modeled that a lot. Okay. And get saying that, by the way, hiking out, that is going to lead us to our choice of containers. I bet you if I looked in your vehicles right now at your, like I said, get home bag or VBOC, some of you guys probably have Rubbermaid containers. Rubbermaid containers. Or some other type of uh, plastic box, maybe an action packer. Now, I'm not going to say in some situations that's a bad choice. It could be a good choice, but it doesn't really lead you to hiking with it, does it? Would you want to hike with an action packer for 100 miles? No. Okay, no, you wouldn't. What you're going to have to have is some type of way to carry what you have decided you need in your situation. How about this right here, boys? A duffel bag and by the way this particular one has shoulder straps is that a good choice for your v mm, I would say probably not because even though it has shoulder straps it's really not meant for long distance potentially technical hiking again getting to my focus which is outdoorsy because I find myself in Wyoming Sometimes, and I'm like looking over there, there's like mountains there, desert there. And I'm like, yeah, okay. Well, that's what I need to prep for. Because that for me in my situation is where the VBOC would really come into play. Getting, getting back home with that. So I'll give this zero to five stars. I'll give it two and a half. It's not horrible. You could do it. You can do anything if you set your mind to it. If you're focused up. Yeah, you can. No, what you need to have is of course, and I've mentioned it already. I let the cat out of the bag, so to speak, is a backpack. So this is what I've come up with. Oh, and by the way, what size backpack? And I'll show you this. I already told you what it is. You need to think about this. So for me, I'm always hauling stuff in the truck or sometimes in the SUV. So I don't have unlimited room. Now, if you're on a semi-tractor trailer, like firearms, fuels, and fabrication, dude, he's a trucker. He's a TMP donor travels long distances. What's up, dude? Um, if you're like that, maybe you have a lot of room, uh, but most of us don't. So you're going to have to compact it. So what we're looking at is about the same size as my urban survival kit series. We don't really want to go to a framed backpack. I don't want to get something with like, I don't know, 6,000 cubic inches. I, I could, but I, I want it to be smaller, higher speed. Speaking of which, you could actually, if you guys, like you didn't want to go through all the series of the video, you're like, just bottom line it for me, nothing fancy. If, if I were to bottom line it for you to have you guys super prepared in your vehicle bug out kit, I would think if you had a regular nothing fancy style bug out kit, like you have at the house, you'll be a-okay, except probably for weapons. I think you would want to upgun a little bit from that. Because remember, I recommended 20, 22 long rifle. And for VBOC, I'll let you right now, jumping ahead, no. We want more. Potentially way more. But if you did a, a bug out kit build, just like I talked about years ago, you'll be good to go. Maybe a USK. I've, I've take, taken my USK and used it as, sorry for all the acronyms, as a VBOC many, many times. And I felt pretty prepared. Some things, you know, I was like, yeah, I probably ought to throw that in there. And I totally talked about in part one, POU, of why I drug my feet on that. Go watch that video again. I talked about that. But you could use any of those kits. I would say US case in particular, pilot survival. Mm, no, that's more Air Force aircraft bound. 
But those two, BOK, USK. There, you're good. Back to your pack choice. So I've determined that for me, I'm using a red wing. Here it is. Here is my v -Bock. How far am I into this? Speaking of high detail. Oh, we're doing good. Doing good. There you go, boys. What? v -Bock in the bunker. Have I told you how much I love Kelty Red Wing backpacks? They are a reference standard for me. Reference standard. I do love them so very, very much. And I always have. I do recommend them. And by the way, below you will see my links taking you to my recommended retailers for many, many of the supplies I'm going to talk about. Please use my affiliate links because I get like seven cents when you purchase something and it adds up so I can buy, I don't know, more ammunition. Yeah, use my affiliate links. You should have a Kelty Ring Red Wing in your just backpack selection if you're outdoorsy. But for me, it is pretty much the ideal V-Bock container. It's going to be capable of long distance hiking. It's not too big. It definitely in this generation is not too large or too heavy. I'm talking the pack itself. This is a Red Wing 50. I think that's standing for 50 liters of size. And damn, it's just perfect. It has 500 denier Cordura fabric, zippers, pockets, tension straps on the four points. One, two, three, four. It has a back zip open panel right here. Now, what we lost in the latest generations of Red Wing. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm thinking of a different pack. We still have it here. I'm talking about panel loading. So we can unzip this. And you'll see this as we progress in the kit. But you can unzip the entire front panel, flip this open, and load up the pack. Or unload it. Or sort gear. It's really an excellent pack. It is my choice. Another thing you want, and this is really important. I hope you're listening. Your v -Bock is going to undergo a <clears throat> heck ton of wear because it's going to be thrown in the vehicle. You'll probably be taking it in and out of the vehicle multiple times because I'll tell you this, not every trip needs a v -Bock. Okay, let's be honest. We don't need to have like a vehicle bug out kit every time we go to the grocery store. I mean, just heck, just use my Corvette survival kit. What's that you say? It's Octane Booster, Viagra, and some condoms. And your Glock. That's all you need, man. That's a Corvette survival kit. You're good. Viagra and some condoms. That's probably what most Fed owners have, by the way. Like that Corvette survival kit. Add that to the list, nothing fancy. I want a video on that. Maybe a series. That would be funny. Oh my gosh. Don't even tempt me. I'll just be ridiculous up here. <laughs> Corvette survival kit. No, you don't need your v box for every errand you do so that means you're going to be taking it out maybe it throwing it to the side it might be on concrete this thing is going to go through a lot of wear should have edited that out cough sorry one reason i know that is because my usk functioned as a v-bock for many years in tmp going out into the desert i throw my usk in the back with all the steel targets and lo and behold it was in this pack or one like it it was a kelty pack i forget exactly which one and it, it wore well. I mean, yeah, it got beat up and it's supposed to get beat up because it's a high wear item. The reason I'm mentioning this is don't buy something shitty. Don't buy something that cannot take the wear because if you do a proper VBOK, it's going to weigh something. Okay. I saw one dude, he's commenting his weighs 26 pounds. And I say, Hey, thumbs up, dude. That's a really good weight. I weighed this. I'm going to roll in the image. 29 pounds subject to change by the way but 29 pounds without weapon by the way well hold on secret i'm going to show you something as we go but uh far as you know without the main weapon weapon 29 pounds that's doable that's not too heavy i think too heavy for a vehicle bug, bug out kit would probably be like 50 pounds that's probably too much unless you're counting food and water this doesn't have water in it. So quick mention of that. For water, I always carry it in my vehicle. Remember, there's some differences between my other kit concepts. That's a primary difference right there is because 
I'm not going to put bottles of water in here because I always and always have traveled with water in my vehicles and plenty of it, at least a gallon, probably two gallons, which is a lot for just be bopping around. Now you're going to see how I dress the water situation as we dig in here, but no, there's, there's other things you're going to have in your vehicle with you. And as we break it down, I'm going to tell you what I have in my car, our truck might be different with you. The Red Wing is outstanding. We have elastic pockets here. Again, we have our compression straps. Look at the suspension system, boys. Holy hell. This is like considered a three-day pack, the Kelty Red Wing 50 liter. But you see how they're anatomically shaped for your body. They're adequately padded. We have an aluminum stay right here that is actually pre-bent so it follows your spine. It's going to be the main weight bearing structure of the backpack, which allows it to carry that weight. The straps on these, these son of a guns are just excellent. They're using closed cell foam. We do have some mesh here, which allows you to breathe. Be careful. You don't get the weeds and seeds in there. As I've ranted about through the decades, we have a, a strap right here, sternum strap, which is fantastic. The belt itself is fantastic. And notice by the way, I've rubber banded it because you don't want a bunch of straps getting in the way boys. I'm serious. You don't. You want to basically have them rubber banded up because this wants to kind of just hang out unnoticed in your cargo area, wherever you decide to put it. Now, here comes one of those high detail enabled detours we're going to take. Theft. When you put a lot of cool goodies in this backpack, maybe you decide to put your gun in there. Maybe it's your pistol. We'll talk more about that when we get to weapons. You got a lot of valuable stuff in there. So how do you prevent theft? I think one of the best ways to pre prevent theft is to camouflage it. So you would have your Red Wing V-Bock put together and then you would get a very ugly, gaudy uh, duffel bag, which you could purchase inexpensively. I might put some links below if I find them. Then zip your backpack in such a gaudy, you know, overlayer, we'll say, and write on it in big magic marker letters, used diapers. I'm not joking. Used diapers. You might even like stain the outside of it. So it looks like fecal matter stained on it. I have found people will not mess with your vehicle if they see anything related to fecal. So in California with the van, when I used the van, dude, I would put like fake poop on the dash in high threat areas and high, uh, you know, break in areas. No one ever messed with my van. And I'm talking, it's realistic. It's a realistic fake piece of shit and it's big. And I put it right on the dash people. And then I put like butt wipes next to it. And, uh, I'll put like used candy wrappers. I'll, I'll use like Cheeto wrappers. So it just looks like a mess. People are like, mm, no, I'm good. Use that. <laughs> I know you guys are laughing. Use that concept concept to protect your VB. Okay. Now your wife may like get mad at you and she's, she's going to like, dude, what are you doing? That looks horrible. And they're like, Hey man, I got a thousand dollars in that kit. I'm not losing it. Deal with it. You're the man of the house. You're in charge. Not her. Sorry. You're in charge. She's not rules of nothing. Fancy. You're the king of the house. Be the king. You're plotting the righteous course for the family. Are you not? Salute. Salute. Of course you are. You're probably going to save your ass with this. She's probably going to be with you. Which, by the way, I've planned on Mrs. Nut and Fancy being with me. And so this is basically a two-person kit. Because we are empty nesters at this point. So the boys usually aren't with us. Two-person. So 29-pound two-person, not including food. I'm doing pretty good. Okay, so camouflage, camouflage. Make it look nasty. Make it look unenticing. Now, when we get to guns, I may mention this again. During the Protifa riots of 2020... And I tweeted this out, dude. Go look through my Twitter feed, my Twitter X feed. I showed that I was carrying an AR-15 with like five different mags, LBE, body armor, Glock. And I locked it in the SUV with um, a, Pelican, a locking Pelican case or Pelican style case. I'll put links below. Use a cable lock. Run it through the steel structure of your SUV or your truck. Maybe it's a seat support. Maybe it's one of those steel rings. And then... I would use probably a combination lock, not a key lock, because Murphy's Law, you're going to lose a freaking key. 
Okay, and that is a great way to store your gun. It's going to be heavier. It's going to be bulkier. It's going to take up space, but we're trying to protect. Uh, anybody can defeat any type of theft prevention that we put on our vehicles, on our V-Box. Okay, word, I get that. You get that. But we're doing what we can do realistically. Okay, and that's what we're doing. Just realistically. And this whole kit build is really about that. Is we want to be realistic. Got to edit a cough. And what you're seeing, by the way, is nothing made just for YouTube. This is my actual vehicle bug out kit that I will use from here on out. Now, like I said in part one, I have used other things, just not in an organized V-Bock fashion and probably with some glaring holes of preparation in it. Okay, but the V-Bock will cover most bases. You can't cover all the bases. There's just no way you can do it. Back to the container, Red Wing. Okay, as I zip it open, I'll talk more about it and show you the features inside. I mean, for what you're getting for the low amount of money you're spending, Red Wing. Okay, and again, you want something that you can comfortably hike long distances with. I know the Red Wing very well because of the Nothing Fancy project. So this is my go-to way to test knives. What are we like, year 16, 17 doing this? So when I test knives, and I've done this before, I will load a Red Wing up with 40 pounds of stuff. And I'm talking knives, saws, uh, lubricant like WD-40 food, dog food, because Dogness is going with me. I know the pack well. I've hiked, I wouldn't say like, definitely not 100 miles, but I've like, hiked with a Red Wing like 10 miles in one day. And it, I was like, yeah, this thing's comfortable. Mid-sized pack, that's what I call it. If you can get away with smaller, get away with smaller. But you're going to have to make some hard choices as I dig in here. Maybe you look at that and go, yeah, I like that concept. I don't know if I really need it. I'm going to go lighter where nothing fancy went heavier. Again, you're the boss of your situation. You know it way better than I do. Okay, I'm going to start on the top here as we dig in. We're basically done with containers. Go with the damn backpack. I think I've made my case on that. Probably more than I should have. Again, we have some top zipping pockets on the very top here. What do I put here? Well, I'm not going to say everything is organized to its final form in my V-Bock yet, but it's close because, um, you know, I'm still just thinking about certain things. Basically, I want lighting uh, available to me, signaling items available to me, condoms, Octane Booster, and Viagra. Just seeing if you're listening. No, uh, maybe a gun. Okay, so let's zip in this. Zip open this pocket right here and see what I have. Oh, I have a holster. One of my old Galco holsters meant for a tiny pistol. And you can see the name of the pistol right there. And lo and behold, <clears throat> surprise, surprise, I've integrated a backup pistol in my V-Bock. Oh my goodness, that is so exciting. So exciting. It's a Jetfire. Hey, Bretta, why don't you make that damn Jetfire already? Seriously. What's taking you so long? Seriously, it's bad. Dude, the 25 ACP Jetfire is one of my all-time favorite backup pistols. Now, you guys are not going to be able to get one of these unless you go to Gunbroker and probably pay a lot of money. Um, the reason I love it so much is because it's an 8 plus 1, very tiny, very diminutive pistol. Uh, but it's reliable. It's accurate. You have to keep them lubed up, though. If you don't lube them, sometimes they will stop on you. It's not a rimfire pistol. So the Bobcat Model 21A which I also have, also integrated into a BOK. I've signed it off forever to a VBOK, or not VBOK, but a regular BOK. Yeah, uh, those are great, but 22 rimfire is 22 rimfire. Sometimes they're just problematic, okay? And I think you guys know this, but the Beretta here, the, the jet fire is just amazing. I mean, it's like a mini machine gun. It shoots so fast. It has, you know, tip up loading. And by the way, this is loaded because it's an in-operation V-Box. So I do keep it fully loaded. Nine rounds. Super tiny. Palm of your hand. Palm of your hand. Another good option would be a Ruger LCP2. LCP2 Max. Oh my gosh. I love those guns. Any super reliable, super compact pistol. Now, since we're into kind of, kind of the weaponry of my V-Box series um let's talk about this if you're like me and you go out 
of the house and you're going on a trip, you already have a gun. True or false? Well, soon you're assuming you're in a state where you can have a pistol. Yeah, you're going to have a gun. Probably your Glock, maybe your P365, your XL, your Hellcat, uh, whatever. All types of Glocks. Good for you. You should. This is kind of another change from my other kit builds. I'm assuming you have or I have my pistol. And in the situation of me bugging out, guess what? I take the pistol from the vehicle and it's integrated into my V-Box system. Okay? As much as I can. Why do I have this pistol? Because. Because one is none, two is one. That's a concept. Because Murphy's Law means the time that I really need this, for whatever reason, I left the house and I don't have my primary combat pistol with me. Is this a combat pistol? No. But close quarters, it does something. I don't want to be on the other end of this son of a gun. Do you? No. So this is something and it's compact and it can be a surprise. It can stow away in a magazine pouch, your pocket. I mean, you saw the holster. Look at this, dude. This is tiny. The Jetfire is so amazing. Oh my gosh, Brett, why are you not making your Jetfire? I cannot believe it. The answer is probably too expensive for them to make. The reason is it's just a backup and it only is, I would say probably everything with the extra ammo, probably... 15, uh, 16 ounces. I didn't weigh it all. Maybe more than that. Maybe a pound and a half worth it. That's why. And multi-person, I told you this is a multi-person build. And so this gun will probably go to Mrs. Nut and Fancy as we hike. That's my thinking on the V-Bock. Do I recommend you do so as well? Yes. There's my answer. If you're asking, yes, integrate a very small pistol. Another one would be a P3AT by kel -Tec. Still an excellent 380 pistol. Those are awesome. How much ammo do I bring for my 25 ACP pistol? Not much. Not much. I got two boxes. You know, I've got three magazines in total and then two boxes. I do have some hollow points. And notice what I've done to my boxes. I've completely taped them up. And this is what I want you to do because your boxes are just going to get thrashed. Your V-Bock, again, is going to go in the, in the vehicle, out of the vehicle. It's going to, everything in there is going to get crushed, beat up, bent. Plan on it. I know from my USK use, it just does. You need to plan accordingly. I got some Privy parts and FMJs. Privy is actually some very low velocity ammo. I really need to get a better uh, box than this. Two of these would be fine. But 25 ACP doesn't expand anyhow. It's saying hollow point, but it doesn't have the velocity. It's just low power. But that's all I got. 50 rounds. Here's where I'm keeping my extra mags. I do label everything. As you guys know, I recommend you do the same. I got one little magazine container and I got another spare magazine. There's, there's one in the pistol. That is a total of three mags. It's not bad. 24 rounds in a semi-automatic as fast as you can pull the trigger gun. That's something, bro. That's something. I just love the 950 Jetfire. It's just the 950 BS is just so incredibly cool. Did I paint this front sight? I need to paint that front sight. There you go. So it's in the top pocket. Um, I did say yes. I think you should incorporate a tiny pistol backup style in your v -Bock. Not necessary though. And, you know, if you're worried about legalities, I don't know where you live, what your legalities say. Think it through. Maybe it's not worth it. I don't know. You have to decide. Do I have anything else in this top pocket? Yes. Pepper spray. Pepper spray. Okay, so getting to our situation, it could be a violent situation, right? I do want to represent that. We live in freaking clown world. You guys know that, right? It's freaking clown world. Can you even predict what's coming up? Uh, I have some predictions and they're pretty dark, to be honest with you. I'd much rather use something non-lethal or less than lethal like this if I possibly can. Remember, our job is to get to our destination. Our job is not to engage in combat of any sort if we can avoid it. We're actually going to avoid, 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 and negotiate, negotiate, negotiate. Did I say to avoid already? Yeah, do that. Go around, hike around, avoid. But what if? This would be a nice little thing to have. By the way, this canister is long expired. Doesn't matter. It still works. I, I have like uh, maced dogs, like a pit bull that with like 20-year-old 
uh, OC spray and dude, it was totally effective. So this is this one. I am not going to tell you, you probably read the expression date. It's embarrassing. Another point of your VBOK, your BOK, USK, everything you put in there is going to expire because you're busy. You have a lot of things going on. You're not going to get in there every five years and replace items and spend another $300 replacing stuff. It won't happen. Trust me though. It's still viable. I did tape this just so uh, I can remember what it is exactly. So as it undergoes wear and storage and use, I don't forget what it is. Now this top pocket, I did say signaling. You might say signaling. I thought everything is like broken down. We're in without rule of law and the roads are unusable. There's no one coming to our rescue. The answer to all the above is yes, you are correct, sir. You're totally correct. But, but let me see my time here. Oh, we're doing good. You're correct in all those assumptions, but we're planning for worst case. But what if, what if you do start hiking and things get better and there are emergency services, which emerge and maybe you are out in BFE beyond far Egypt. Maybe you will need to signal maybe for whatever reason, you need to signal another group of people. I have a couple of ways to do that in my V-Bark. And this is one of them. This is the uh, Orion flare pistol. This is excellent. And I got to tell you, dudes, it is super duper lightweight. And no, it will not shoot 12 gauge shot shells. If you're wondering, they sized it differently on purpose. They knew guys would try that and no doubt blow the pistol apart and probably hurt themselves in the process. But these are awesome. I have used these in Air Force training and on ones like them. They are fantastic. They go up, they hang in the air, and they're bright. They're visible in daytime, nighttime. There's a little instruction card with them. They come with a little strip. I only have four flares. I better make them count. The thing's awesome. And they don't cost that much. They really don't. Simple break open action, semi automatic action. No, single shot. It's not semi auto. Did you really think it was semi auto? Come on, dude. My auto. Oh shit, I'm out of flares. <laughs> shit. Oh my gosh. Now, unlike the movies, I would not recommend shooting, uh, I don't know, a grizzly with it, a bad guy with it, and thinking you're going to have an effect. You probably will not. But it's so lightweight, easy to incorporate. Yeah, I do like it. No apologies for having a flare pistol in there. I know, I really hope. Uh, rule of law does come back. I really do. And then we go, let's go to the side pockets from here. Now you guys probably saw this pun intended saw this. Uh, it's a saw survivor boys. Oh my gosh. A saw survivor. That is so excellent. One of the best backpacking saws ever made. Uh, here's the deal though. I've got to be honest with you. I'm not going to be keeping it in the V box because it's too expensive, too rare to have in a V box, something that maybe will never be used. I hope it's never used. What I'm going to do is put one of those folding, less expensive saws in there. Probably the Silky Saw Gomboy. Stand by for my review on that. Uh, and the big boys like it too. It's basically a hand saw. Not as capable as this one, but I do recommend having a saw. Especially when you see my shelter, having a saw to be able to supplement it with limbs, uh, tree boughs, firecraft, shelter craft, having a saw is awesome. And you're in a vehicle. We're not on foot, uh, least to start out with. So you can take a little bit more weight. Now, if you guys are new to TMP, you don't know what I'm talking about with a saw survivor. It basically folds out into, well, a rectangle. I got to take the blade out here too, though, and show you. I'm not going to put it all together because we don't have time for that. We're going in high detail, but we're not going to be stupid, okay? We're not going to go into stupid plaid detail on that. No, thank you. So it goes like that, and then I put it right here, and then there you go. It's like a box saw. Really strong, super capable, as capable of any as any outdoor saw to include the Wyoming saw, which I also love, the Sven saw, which I also love. There you go. I mean, I'd really like to keep it in the v box, but... This thing's collectible, dude. I bought this when they were uh, going out of production. One of the TMPers contacted me in the at the time. This is before Patreon. He goes, dude, the saw survivor's going away. And I was like, what? They're like, yeah, they're going out of business. I'm like, okay, add to cart. <laughs> and lo and behold, I'm using it. 
well, at least temporarily. So do you have a saw in your VBOC? You should, doesn't have to be this capable. The I'm gonna have some links below. They'll take you to a really excellent folding, very affordable hand saw. It's not like a silky saw, not as capable, but for doing a limb or a tree, about like so, it'll do fine. In the side pocket still. Now, you might remember in my day hike survival kit, I introduced these knives. I love them so much. They are so lightweight, relatively rust resistant. Um, it is the cold steel full sized uh, fixed blade knives. This is, I believe, called the commercial series. And I, I want to say this is a Western Hunter, something like that. There you go. That's the knife, that, my survival knife. Is it the most capable survival knife in the world? No, but I have one. It's a survival knife. Uh, it's a fixed blade knife. It can baton. I know because I've done it with these. Has a great thermoplastic grip to it. Lanyard hole. Could function in self-defense role. Really excellent. What I need to do is like grind in some jimping with my Dremel right here, boys. Shiny. So, I mean, if you don't want a shiny blade for, I don't know, being noticed out there, you might be careful with that. But this is a fantastic knife. I mean, it costs like literally nothing for your utility you're going to get out of it. And look at the plastic sheath, dude. I'm going to card my review on these knives from Cold Steel. Okay. And you can go look and choose the one for you. You don't have to go with this. But remember, if you put in like something like a Trailmaster, um, an Ontario SP50, something big, RTAC2, you're going to add a lot of weight. I'm already at 30 pounds, okay? So you're going to have to make some choices. Don't, don't you know, swing for the fences. I mean, I get you. I understand it. But I bet a lot of you guys don't even have a fixed blade in your VBOC right now. You should because I can skin game with this, albeit I can skin game with my other knives as well. But firecraft, sheltercraft, defensive purposes, uh, this knife is outstanding. And by the way, it would not be riding here in the backpack. It's going to go into my system which I'll show you. Okay, my uh, LBE. What? What? LBE, nothing fancy. Yes, LBE. Into this side pocket we go on nothing fancy VBOC part two. Um, I have miscellaneous things here, so they're not necessarily things I need to uh, access rapidly, but here's the deal. You're gonna run out of space. So you're gonna have to find places for things that you want to carry and the interior of the pack will just fill up. Remember, this is kind of a two-person dealio. If it was one person, I would have more room. But I'm planning for Mrs. Nothing Fancy, so I have some stuff in there for her. Tampons and stuff. You know, stuff she probably doesn't need at this point in her life. There's uh, my shower towel. This is just coming out of my system. It's just a, you know, microfiber towel. Micro, I can't speak. Microfiber towel. Rolled up with rubber bands, you're going to be using a lot of rubber bands because you want to compact things. I won't unroll this, but it's pretty large. It's about like this. And this is a great way to towel off and to dry off because you know what? Murphy's Law, you're going to be in the rain or snow when this goes down. It's going to be driving rain and maybe you just want to towel off before you get into your tent or your shelter. Here you go. Maybe you just want to clean up. Maybe you find a creek along the way and you're like, dang, I need to clean up. Ooh, cold, dry off. Doesn't weigh that much. It does take up room. You might want to shine this and not take it. Maybe it's a dumb thing for you guys. I don't know. Side pocket, poop shovel. Well, not really a poop shovel. It's just an all-purpose shovel. Uh, I'm kidding about the poop, guys. Relax. I got other things to worry about. I'll poop where I need to poop and just keep going. But this is a way to dig... It's integrated in the VBOC. It weighs, I didn't weigh this. Oh, I got a scale right here. Do you guys want high detail? Oh, you do. Okay, so we'll weigh it. Three ounces, dudes. Three ounces, said the kitchen aid scale. Three ounces. Worth taking? You betcha. It's a way to dig. I don't know. I don't know. I just have a feeling you're going to need to dig. Maybe extracting your vehicle. Getting to your separate vehicle rescue kit, which is separate from your VBOC. I made that point pretty clear. How about a super heavy duty, large garbage sack bound up with those rubber bands, which I told you you'd be using a lot. I use them a lot. There you go. I'm not going to unfold that, but it's a heavy duty one, not one of those crappy ones. 
Is that important? Yeah, it's important. Use a good one. And then we go to this side pocket of the Nut and Fancy V-Bock Red Wing. What do we have here, ladies and gentlemen? Oh, one other thing that I love about these side pockets on the Red Wing is their tunnel. You saw that, right? So you saw the saw viver can go behind the pocket like so. See that? I've got some interference there in that pocket, but you get the idea. And it will come all the way down into this mesh pocket. Let me demonstrate that. Which is meant for water bottles. That's what that pocket's meant for, bros. Right there. This is fun, by the way. Really fun. Okay, side pocket. I told you uh, weaponry, lighting, and signaling. I do carry, like in some of my other survival kit concepts, some silent sticks. <clears throat> Again, we might hook up with some other folks to egress. There's one more digging in there. They're lightweight. They are disposable, but it might be a quick way to mark something as you get on out, uh, underway with your V-Bock hike, we'll call it. Okay, silent sticks. Needed? Mm, no, they're not needed. I just had them. I was like, yeah, let's throw those in there. And then we get to my primary lighting. Let me bring this down just for a second because I have a rant coming up since we are high detail. High detail. Not fancy. I love this high detail. You just keep rolling, bro. <clears throat> you got it. I'm going to roll. Okay. I am wearing right now an O-Light. Okay. It's my choice as it has been for years and years of an EDC light. It's a Baton 3. Okay. Now, this runs an 18650 battery. I do integrate these. Speaking of technological advances, going back to my previous kit builds, I do run these in all my kits now. So I think in the Urban Survival Kit, I had like a cheesy headlamp. That's gone. I'm running these. These burn well. They can clip just like this to your hat. Voila, headlamp. What? Instant headlamp, bro. What a dork. I know, I know. I'm a dork, but it, dude, it works. And then I don't have this hat taped, but remember you want to tape, you want to tape your, uh, your hats with electrical tape right here, 3M brand electrical tape. And then this clip will not rotate that much. Okay. I did say I have a rant and I do, and this is for Olight. I don't know if you'll watch this series of videos. If not, you're insane. You should. Okay. But, uh, one thing I don't like about the Olight clip on this is these are total crap. When I reviewed these Baton 3s and the Mini Warriors, I was thinking, oh, cool, it's, you know, it's an improved clip. It does attach to the body better. Almost every time, this part right here will get totally bent out. And I always have to grind it off with a Dremel and then fix it or go to their website and try to order more, and they're always out of stock. Well done, Olight. Yeah, they need to get their clip stuff situated. Their clips are shitty. I'm saying it right here in the V-Box series. They need to fix their clips. They need to be more permanently attached. They need to go all the way around the light. They need to use a screw system to tighten it down so it will not come off. And they need to make them bend proof. This ain't working. This part right here gets bent out every time. All it gets is just a little bit of snag. Boom, ruined. And you're like, oh, just bend it back. Well, first I had to super glue it onto the damn light. So now I have to say, oh, do I need to rip the clip off? I don't want to. It's glued onto the flashlight because it kept popping off. Another problem. No. So what I do is I just leave it on the light like I've done here and I mill it off. So this is, is this a mini warrior? No, it's a baton three with a nut and fancy clip mod. Super glued on. There, rant complete. Fix your damn clips, O light. Every clip they have is just garbage. In the end, it's garbage. I'm just being honest with you guys. It's problematic. They bend, flip off. The best one they had is this one that I'm putting in the V-Box. So here comes an original S20. Notice it's in a plastic bag. It is appropriately labeled. You see it right here, right? Lighting. And then I just grabbed one of my old S20s, still running on the same power source, still a totally awesome. And I kiped it from a motorcycle system. It was already bagged up for a motorcycle system. And it's the S20. And I did say this is the best clip they ever had. Um, I think it really is. I've had fewer problems with this clip than I had with their other supposedly improved clips. So same multi-mode flashlight, right? 18650 
really excellent, durable, waterproof. This one has been used out in the desert so much. It's been used to illuminate steel targets, this little S20. Look how small this one is. Another reason I like it for V-Bach, because every subsequent generation they do, oh, light, shame on you, they make it bigger. Let me see if this is bigger than the S3. No, I'm sorry, I'm wrong. <laughs> it's not. The S3 is actually smaller. I thought it was. No, the S3 is smaller. Okay, I take that back. This is still excellent though. And since I had an in inventory and I have to go buy another one, it's relegated and signed off forever to the VBOC. Okay, and by the way, that's another principle which I introduced in my BOK series. Once you integrate something into your kit, it's gone forever. I'm serious, you don't dig into it and go, oh, let me grab my O-Lite to go hunting. Let me grab that little S20 or my Baton 2, my Baton 3, my Mini Warrior and use it to go on my tactical shoot school exercise. Nope, don't do it because it's never going to get returned. You may lose it. It stays in the kit forever. I've made that ultra clear. And guys here in the project, bless their hearts, they have adopted that. I've seen it many, many times. Once it's in your kit, there it stays. I know it's sacrificial. That's the nature of a kit, dude. It's an insurance policy. I made that ultra clear, right? I have a light cone here, which is awesome. I don't know if they still have these. I hope so. Signaling, right? There we go. Strobe. Oh my gosh. What a great light. And look at how tight that fits. It's polycarbonate. It's not like cheesy plastic. What a great light, man. 18650 battery. And then I have some CR123s in a plastic sleeve ready to go. That's for this particular light. That's all I have. So one charged up 18650. I do keep it charged. CR23. What's the duration of our hike, boys? Let's see if you remember from part one. Yeah, that's that's about right. About if someone said a week, and that's about right. We, it, I know we're pushing it for a week with the stuff we have, but that's kind of what I'm thinking. One week of stuff, and so will this last me a week? Heck yeah! I mean, using every night the 18650 will last easily a week. You could use that battery mid mode. I don't know, four or five hours a night, you'd be good to go. The CR123s are just a backup. Got a cough. Time check. Oh my gosh, I got to wrap it up uh, for this part two. Okay, in lighting, by the way, I do have a backup. One is none, two is one. Let me say this. We're in the vehicle. I always have my EDC flashlight with me all the time. So in my or in your VBOC build, you might say, hey, I know I'll have a flashlight. I just pulled this out of my pocket, showing you that indeed I do have my ADC light. But here's the dealio. It might be on its last throws for battery charge, right? How many of us have done that? I have. I meant to charge it, didn't. And then this kicks off and then you have a dead or near dead flashlight in your pocket. What good is it going to do you? Now in my glove compartment of the Titan, I do have extra batteries. Hopefully you have some more systems and layers of preparation items, not a ton, but a few things in your truck. Vehicle, that would be cool, but we are planning worst case. And I really like that approach for all my kit builds. You don't know if you're gonna have a flashlight. For whatever reason, maybe you don't. Two is one, one is none. Uh, so with the two is one concept, I also have the beautiful, very affordable I, uh, Olight i3T. It is a single AAA battery. Oh my gosh, do I love this light. I just love these lights. I use them all the time. They're integrated in all types of... Uh, sorry, I keep looking over here, but I'm looking at the screen, make sure I'm centered for you guys. I use them all the time. Just two modes, low and, and high. That's all you have. They're super lightweight. Unfortunately, they do have that same clip. It, it can clip onto your hat, which is good. I'll demonstrate right here. That's good, and I have less problems with these i3T clips and all their pin light clips because I'm not riding them in my pocket. If they are in my pocket, I'm actually carrying them inside my pocket. Now, in this one, I recommend you do the same. Use lithium batteries. That's a lithium disposable battery, not a rechargeable. They're lighter weight. They store forever, and they won't uh, leak on you. So 10 years down the road, you'll come to this light. It won't have leaked out. I don't think on you. Then I have two extras, triple A's. Okay, so I got three batteries. I, I got to say, I'm pretty proud of myself for my lighting. 
<laughs> it's about the same as a BOK, about the same as uh, the DS, not DSK. I can't remember what light I had on there, but uh, Urban Survival Kit. Yeah, pretty good. I like it. So there it is. And I'm not really putting it in there for waterproofness. All those lights are waterproof. It's for organization purposes. And boys, we're done with part two. Part two of the Nothing Fancy V Box series of videos. Thank you so much for watching. I'm having a great time doing these things. I really am. And the benefit is I get my stuff squared away for what is now in this clown world of ours, a necessity. Okay. In part three, we're going to pick it up, digging into the Red Wing. We're just going to go down into the pack and I'll share my philosophy with you. I'm not going to say I know everything. I don't. I just, I'm consistent in my philosophy. It does make sense. Maybe I can make you think of something you haven't thought of before. And then you're going to see a lot of good comments below all these videos of guys uh, maybe giving you an idea of something that in your situation makes a lot of sense. Thank you so much. Uh, remember to subscribe, hit the notification bell, become a donor. Thank you much. Part two soon. I'm sorry, part three soon. Over and out from the bunker.